Hi guys, I'm Danielle. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to the start of a new reading vlog. So for this vlog, I'm going to be reading some newer releases that came out in the second half of this year. So I do have a couple books in mind, but three definitive ones that I'm going to be reading for this are Butcher and Blackbird by Bryn Weaver, Caught Up by Liz Tom Ford, and A Soul to Revive by Opal Rain. As of filming this intro, I have finished Butcher and Blackbird already, but luckily I decided to take some video clips while I was reading it, so I do have those ready to go for you. The next book I'm reading is going to be Caught Up by Liz Tom Ford. I have started that already, so I'm really excited to continue on with it. I'm about halfway through and I'm really enjoying where it's going. Then the third book that I know definitively that I'm going to be reading for this is A Soul to Revive by Opal Rain. It's the fifth book in her Duskwalker series, which is a monster romance series. I'm really excited to get started on that one. Hopefully I'll be reading that before Halloween comes around because I feel like this is the perfect season for it. I guess we'll just get on with business then and I'll start talking about Butcher and Blackbird. Hey guys, so I'm coming to you with my first update for Butcher and Blackbird. I am having so much fun with this book. If you don't know what it's about, it's about two serial killers who meet and end up starting a game together where both of them have to compete to kill a different serial killer and whoever kills that serial killer first is the winner. So we have Sloane and Rowan and right now they're competing to kill one of the serial killers and I just got to a part where they're having dinner with him and oh my god I am so excited about what's going to happen next. I cannot wait. I don't want to spoil anything for you but it is in the trigger warnings. It is a big trigger, so look at that before you go into it, but I cannot wait to see what happens with this book. Also, I'm really enjoying the chemistry that they have together. I've laughed quite a few times during this, which I guess I was kind of not expecting with a dark romance, but that's it for my update right now. I'll check back when I've read a little more. This one is uh, a rom-com about serial killers. I heard that this is really good, so I'm excited. Oh my god, so far my reading this week has just gone so well. All right. Hey guys, so I'm here with my final review for Butcher and Blackbird. I really enjoyed this story. I really liked the characters. Their dynamic was great. They had such great banter and the pining was A plus in this book. There was actually one point in the book where they talked about a specific piercing and I actually had to stop and look it up because I had no idea what it was. I've read a lot of dark romance and seen a lot of things and that one was new for me. I did find Sloane's safe word choice really funny and I liked the callback to the beginning of the book with that one. There were some parts though that I found myself skimming over the writing and having to look back at it and read it over again. So I don't think it's going to get a five star. Right now I'm kind of in between a four and a four and a half. I kind of want to sit on it and decide from there. But overall this book was surprisingly sweet for a serial killer romance and I'm really excited for the next one in the series. So the next book that I'm going to be reading in this vlog is one that I've already started reading. I actually ended up having to stop that one and start Butcher and Blackbird because I heard that it was going to be leaving Kindle Unlimited and I didn't want to have to wait to get a copy of it since I already had it downloaded. But that next book that I'm going to be talking about is Caught Up by Liz Tom Ford. So far I'm really enjoying Caught Up. We have Kai who is a baseball player who's a single dad. We have Miller who's the coach's daughter who is looking after Kai's son during the season so that they can travel together to games. Obviously there's tension brewing and I'm having a good time so far. I'm really enjoying Miller as a character. She's a pastry chef who's in a little bit of a slump right now and I love baking so it's really nice to hear about that in the book. But I'm going to go. I'm going to pick it up a little bit before I go to sleep tonight and I'll check in with you in the morning. Bye. Good morning or afternoon or evening. I guess whichever it is for you. Here it's morning. I've just finished putting on my makeup before work and I wanted to quick check in with you about the book Caught Up. So I'm about 130 pages from the end of the book and they're finally together so I'm really excited about that. But I feel like the third act breakup is coming up and I am not ready for that. I kind of want everything to stay where it is. 
So I find it really cute that Kai wants her so bad. He's had the team over now so that she can bake for them and they can taste her baking because that is something that has always motivated her. So that was really sweet of him to do. So Kai is really a great dad. Every time he interacts with his son Max is just so adorable. I love when Max comes on the page. I really just want to see more of him. I don't plan to have any kids. So kids are not something I normally read about in books, but in this book, I'm really enjoying it. And I think the author did a really great job just showing a single dad caring for his child. Every time I see Kai Miller and Max together in the book, I just think they're such a cute family and I don't want anything to go wrong with them. As of where I am now in the book, they have slept together a couple times, but I don't think the book is overly spicy. I know everybody has their own spice levels, but for me this book is probably a light spice to medium spice. And then there have been quite a few times where we've gotten to see some of the characters from the other books. I really enjoyed the parts where they go and have family dinner. So that's it for my quick update. I'll probably try and finish this either tonight or tomorrow. I've kind of been a bit slow with my reading lately since I've been doing a bunch of other things this week but 130 pages isn't too much if I can get some good reading in during lunch as well. So I just got out of work for the day and I'm here waiting for my husband to get out of his haircut so we can go food shopping. So I figured I would catch you up on my final thoughts on Caught Up. So I ended up really enjoying this book. Kai was such a great character and he really cared about Miller. He really tried to just show her every single way he could that he wanted her to be in his life. I was correct though in my last update where I said that the third act breakup was going to be coming up soon. It did and it was an okay reason for breaking up. Third act breakups aren't my favorite but this one wasn't too bad. I will say the ending of the book had me crying a couple times. Tears were shed and I could not hold them back. <laughs> So throughout the book, we know that Miller is going to be having an article written on her since she just won a prestigious baking award. And in the end, we actually get to see the article. When that part came up, I was actually outside sitting on my front porch reading since it was such a nice day, probably one of the last nice days that we're going to have. And all of a sudden, the tears just started flowing. I was like, I can't stop. I'm really trying not to spoil anything, so I don't want to say too much. But definitely, if you want to talk about any of these books, shoot me a message and I would love to chat with you about them. Another part of the book I really enjoyed was actually the writing. I found it really easy to understand and follow. There was no parts where I was going back and trying to reread anything. It just flowed really nicely. And I do like Liz Tom Ford's writing style, so I can't wait to see what else she comes out with. In the end, I ended up giving the book a 4.5, just because in the beginning I wasn't really connecting at all. It took me probably like 200 pages until I was really invested in it. But if you're looking for a sports romance with great characters and a really good family aspect, this is definitely the book for you. I would suggest picking it up. The next book that I'll be picking up for this vlog is A Soul to Revive, which is the fifth book in the Duskwalker Bride series by Opal Rain. In this world, most humans lived in walled-off cities because outside of those city walls, monsters and demons roam free in what is called the Veil. If a monster catches you outside of the city, you are most likely going to be eaten and there is no hope for you. The Duskwalkers, though, are the most advanced of the species in this world. They eat humans and other demons and then absorb their knowledge into them and become stronger and are able to speak and stuff like that. They end up taking on the characteristics of the first animal they eat. So all of the different Duskwalkers have different skulls depending on what they ate first. Each book in this series is a monster romance where the monsters actually don't change. They stay monstrous the whole time. I can't tell you too much about this one because I actually haven't read the synopsis. I'm trying to go into it blind. I've really enjoyed the first four books that I've read, so I don't see why I wouldn't enjoy this one too. But once I pick this one up and start reading, I'll come back and give you an update of what's actually going on. Good morning, guys. I am coming to you with my first update for A Soul to Revive by Opal Rain. I picked this book up yesterday and started it, and I've already flown through like 240 pages of it. I am really, really enjoying it. I will say, though, that there are quite a few trigger warnings, and there's a whole little section at the beginning of the book telling you that if you do have any triggers to read those, 
Um, I don't really have any triggers when I'm reading books like this, so I did not read them. So I can only tell you the triggers that I know up to the point that I am in the book right now. So far for the premise of this one, we are following Aileron, who's one of the twins. There has been something tragic that has happened and he has to go to the humans to see if they will help him defeat the Demon King. When he gets to the humans though, they end up capturing him and torturing him. So torture is one of the big triggers in this. If you do not like seeing that, please do not read this book. It is a big part of it. While he's captured though, he meets Emery, who's one of the people that actually helped capture him but she's feeling bad about all the stuff that they're doing to him. They are pretty much taking out his insides while he's alive and letting him just like bleed out onto the floor and she's meant to clean that up. She ends up hatching a plan to help him escape and they both escape together because she's pretty much betrayed her people so there's no going back for her. So I don't wanna spoil anything for you but just know that there is a lot of trauma in this book Emery has her own trauma as well as Aileron having his trauma and they do talk about it throughout the book. But like I said, I'm having a really, really good time with this one. I am really enjoying Aileron's character. He is such a cutie trying to discover the new things about him. As we know in the previous books, he didn't have that much humanity to him, but in this one, when he goes to the humans, there's a huge battle and he eats quite a lot of them, so he does gain quite a bit of knowledge. There have been a couple sexy scenes now and I'm really enjoying that because like I said, Aileron doesn't know what anything is. So when it pops out and Emery helps him out the first time, he is just floored and has no idea what happened. She kind of has to explain everything to him, which is really funny because their whole traveling experience, he is asking her questions about pretty much everything because he has no knowledge. <laughs> right now they're traveling to his brothers, so I'm really excited about the other Duskwalkers that we're going to see in this book as it progresses on a little bit more. Also, the author did say in the beginning of the book that this book is directly tied to the next book in the series, and you cannot skip this one if you plan to read the rest of the series. I have to head to work now though, so I have to go, but I'm hoping to get a little bit more done today. I know I won't finish it today because I've got a bunch of stuff to do after work, but I'm really enjoying it and I will check in when I read a little bit more. Bye! Hey, so I'm back with my final update for A Soul to Revive by Opal Rain, and I can definitively say that I absolutely loved this book. I ended up giving it five stars, and I was going to say it's the best book of the month, but it's the only book of the month that I've read so far, so it's going to have to be the best. I didn't manage to get this one in before the end of the month, but that's okay. I'm happy with a five-star read as my first read. I really enjoyed Emery's character. Later on in the book, we actually get deeper into her backstory and she goes into the tragedy that happened in her past. That was hard to read, but definitely necessary for the book. And I really liked how Opal treated that. I really enjoyed seeing all of the other Duskwalkers and their brides and how they all interacted together. It was really fun to see that, but Merrick and Raywin were not there. They're still wherever they ended up in the last book. There was one part at the end of the book that I was really, really happy to see that we got that scene because of something that happened in the beginning of the book. And I really can't wait to see what happens in the next book because that scene ties directly to that and I cannot wait for the next book. So this had me crying and laughing and generally feeling all of the feels and it definitely earned its five star rating from me. If you're looking for a good monster romance, I highly suggest this series. I would read them in order though and I can't wait to see what happens next. So in the end, I ended up giving Butcher and Blackbird a four star rating, Caught Up got a four and a half star rating, and A Soul to Revive got five stars. I'm really happy with how my reading went throughout this vlog and I'm really excited to get started on the next one. If you've read any of these, please let me know your thoughts down below, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Bug.